rich with promise, the beautiful age-marked face of Europe greets a new dawn. Let us follow the sun Acropian sky as it lights our way to six of the continent's most famous cities. And let us see these cities as the sun awakens people born to them. Madrid. A tourist guide in Rome. A hostess to the Italian splendors of Florence. A skier on the Riviera. A coachman and his fare in Paris. For in mid 20th century, a day in Europe is but a few hours away, permitting all to share what was once the privileged few. sun lights the capital of Portugal as a fisherman and his boy find their way through Lisbon's old quarter. These same stones once echoed to the footsteps of Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan. This quay were built the ships that discovered new lands and seas and carried to the whole world the name Portugal. Today, a boy sees his father off, not in search of new lands, but to ply his boat along the coast to match his sails against the swelling tides and shifting currents of Lisbon's harbor. To this harbor, and to Lisbon's wharves, the ocean-going fleets return each morning and signal the opening of Lisbon's market. To these same wharves, the mariners of old returned with the first news of Brazil, Africa, the Cape of Good Hope, Madagascar, for Europe's people have ranged across the earth and something of all men is in each face. The creaking winches of the dockside blend with the sound of steel rope hauling cable cars on Lisbon's hills. Far below, the bright carpet of the old city. The marks of lost civilizations can still be traced in her winding streets. Iberians, Celts, Greeks, Romans, Suevians, Visigoths, Moors, all came for trade or conquest. The sails are filled with winds as coastal fishermen follow the evening tide toward Lisbon. Lord Byron first saw the city and welcomed it with these words. What beauties doth Lisboa first unfold, her image on that noble tide, which poets vainly pave with gold.
Morning on the outskirts of Madrid. Our Spanish caballero sets out for the city to his work. Madrid, capital city, fashioned by the daring of conquistadores who made an empire of half the world. Its modern tempo cannot hide its historic past, eternally reflected in the art of Velázquez, El Greco, Goya, Murillo. Madrilenos say of their city, from Madrid to heaven, and in heaven a view of Madrid. At Madrid's bullring, the mounting sun marks the first step in an intricate ceremony. The task, to select creatures that will test the mettle of a man. The fighting bull of Spain is the most cunning and savage animal in the world, bred for one purpose, to be a measure of man's skill and daring. The chosen few will either kill or be killed this afternoon. Once the bulls are nothing may interfere with the progress of the drama. Madrid waits for the long shadows which mark the proper hour. Behind the barrier, our caballero awaits the entrance of the first bull. And now begins the drama with the unwritten end, employing a form that has been fixed for more than two centuries, man and beast in a contest for life. In the heart of every Spaniard is this dream. I will be as a matador, gallant, arrogant, courageous, and do dangerous work with beauty and skill. It is a dream which most men share. At last, the moment of truth, and suddenly it is done. In Rome, the day begins with our tourist guide preparing to show the city's wonders. Since legendary Romulus and Remus founded their city on the seven hills above the Tiber, no place has so attracted visitors as Rome. Each day, these two return again through the ages. She to the splendors of Florence, he to Rome. Thus, the sun in Italy sets in motion twin adventures. Our guide in Rome recalls the splendors of his ancient city. Splendors hailed down through the ages by poets, writers, statesmen. Kipling. Rome is above all nations. Browning. Everyone, soon or late, comes round by Rome. Shelley. Go thou to Rome. At once, 
the paradise, the grave, the city, the wilderness. Caesar Augustus. I found Rome brick and left it marble. Claudian. A city greater than any upon earth, whose amplitude no eye can measure, whose beauty no imagination can picture, whose name is Rome. And on the edge of Rome, the smallest sovereign state on earth, whose spirit encompasses the whole world, the Vatican, the holy city. like Rome to contain Christendom's greatest treasures and the crumbling ruins of that brooding place where Christian faith was tested so cruelly, the Colosseum. What tales would be told if these stones could speak? For here Christian martyrs were torn by lions as the price of their faith. And 100,000 Romans gathered to watch armies of gladiators die. Thus did the fire of an empire blaze and grow dim. Now only broken remnants of ancient glory are touched by the dying light of evening. This was the forum. Heart and pulse beat of an empire stretched half across the globe. Shelley must have walked here at such a moment as this. I walk forth in the purple and golden light of an Italian evening. The warm winds bring unknown odors all mellow fading light softens the sublime desolation of the scene. The day in Rome spans 20 centuries. Yet rushing years would stop, turn back, recall the greatest glory. Surely it would be in the 15th century in Florence where most would linger. For this is a city one knows before he reaches it. Here, man had his renaissance, a luminous age of architecture, sculpture, and painting. On this very bridge walked Lorenzo the Magnificent, Michelangelo, Donatello, Verrocchio, Botticelli, Raphael, Dante. Little has changed since that golden age. Wonders lie all about, their names falling from the lips like an Italian prayer. Duomo, Piazza della Signoria, Loggia dei Lanza, Santa Maria Novella, Ponte Vecchio, Uffizi, Piazza Santa Croce, Santa Trinità, Santo Spirito. Here in the Piazza della Signoria, surrounded by the galleries of the Uffizi and the Palazzo Vecchio, the long shadows of afternoon bring toward an end another day. Even the statues seem to sleep, eternally transfixed in time.
In the south of France, the bright new day begins for a young water ski instructor in a quiet mountain village built centuries ago, stone by stone. The mountains rise above the valleys ripe with mimosa, lemon, palm. These mountains protect against the northern winds and keep ever warm the Mediterranean's azure coast. Each day he travels between two worlds, his small village unchanged for centuries, and far below, the world's playground, the Riviera. Cannes, Nice, Jean Le Pen, Cap d'Antibes, Cap Ferrat, names that speak of golden skies and water incredibly blue. is a heaven on earth that casts its pleasures before baker and banker alike. For the Côte d'Azur, once the haunt of royalty, today belongs to all. it seems, Europe draws a breath in the hottest time of day, and all is still. The sun, having passed its zenith, leaves us one word to betoken what follows. Siesta. A word Washington Irving summed up for us thus. Everything invites to indolent repose, the bliss of southern climes. And while the half-shut eye looks out upon the glittering landscape, the ear is lulled by the murmur of running streams. The delicate mountain airs bring with them the sweetness of the surrounding gardens. This dawn awakens our coachman to a city that has grown more lovely with passing time. The ancient tapestry of her life has not faded. In 2,000 years, a small village has grown to a great city, preserving the best of each. The sun is warm, warm and familiar as his landmarks, the chestnut trees of the Champs-Élysées, the cobblestones of the Rue de Rivoli, the gardens at Palais Royal, landmarks that are in truth the world's landmarks. Four times a year, the silken sheen of Paris glitters more brightly in displays of fashion. A separate Paris world decides what women of three continents will wear. In the salons of world-famous designers, magic is woven into dreams of gala parties and quiet rendezvous. Paris, like a fashionable woman, has a great secret, how to heighten beauty with illusion.
Perhaps it was this blending of beauty and illusion and a Parisian couple such as this that moved Thomas Jefferson to say, I am much pleased with the people of this country. The roughness of the human mind is so thoroughly rubbed off that it seems as if one might glide through a whole life among them without a jostle. Mark Twain was another captive to Parisian enchantment. Half persuaded that we were only the sport of a beautiful dream, lo, we stood in magnificent Paris. In a little while, we were speeding through the streets and delightfully recognizing names and places with which books had long ago made us familiar. What a bewitching land it is. All is orderly and beautiful. Everything is charming to the eye. The same magic that captured Mark Twain steals softly each evening through the golden light and touches the sand. Paris stands poised between day and dark. And at this moment, love and beauty take possession of the city. Je suis la scène, cœur de Paris, la nuit rarie, chanfonnière de la mélodie d'amour. The Seine is the heart of Paris that whispers always the melody of love, a melody which weaves through all the valleys of France and glides to the feet of the lovers of Paris. Je suis la Seine, Paris, chanfonnière de la mélodie d'amour. Je chante par bourg aux maisons gris, j'arrive aux pieds des amants. cities of the Grand Tour, there is a moment of quiet at evening before men gather together to banish darkness with wine and song. The Portuguese cafes fill quickly as fado, songs of bitter fate and love unrequited, float on the evening air. Night echoes with flamenco.
Paris, the night is neon, and the dark is greeted in chorus. One day end in a new beginning. The sun, whose course we followed o'er the face of Europe, is poised to touch once more upon a rich and favored continent. The day in Europe is now but a few hours away. Her people, your neighbors, through the magic of jet flight. The cities of Europe's grand tour await you and the new day.